Hello, this is Brad from Survival Comms, so and today we're going to tune a notch type mobile duplexer. Now, what is a duplexer? A duplexer, in this example, is a tuned RF filter that allows a single antenna to receive a signal on one frequency while retransmitting it simultaneously on another, such as utilized in two way radio repeater service. Now there are several different varieties that either pass or reject the operating frequencies and the more capable duplexers do both in the same device. The device on our bench today is a single band UHF six cavity notch duplexer that attenuates the receive frequency from the transmitter and the transmitter frequency from the receiver. These devices in this form factor are suitable for low power service with a frequency split of five megahertz or greater between the receiver and transmitter. The strength of the device in its form factor is its form factor, allowing it to be used in low power wideband split mobile service. The device, unlike higher tier, more capable duplexers, is more forgiving of rough handling. Now the weaknesses of this device is that it is merely a six cavity notch filter suitable for low power mobile service. The device, like anything you put in your feed line, induces loss typically around 1 dB on each side, and it's important to understand that the losses on receive are more detrimental to terminal repeater performance than losses in transmit performance. The device, if not tuned correctly, operated with excessive power or used in too narrow of a split will not properly isolate the receiver from the transmitter, and this will lead to desensitizing the receiver, which is completely undesirable. This, of course, is compounded by the increased insertion loss of a mistuned or a filtered network. Now, on the transmitter side of the house, a mistuned duplexer is like any other mistuned fil filter network. You are banging a square signal peg into a device round hole and experiencing signal shear through excessive reflected power and insertion loss. Now, I hope this explains the what and the why. Now, let's talk about the how. So, let's say in an example such as we're tuning this for GMRS. We're going to want our receiver at 467 on the high side and our transmit at 462 on our transmit side or low side. Our antenna connection here is in the center. Now I'm going to demonstrate tuning this device with a spectrum analyzer with a tracking generator. You can also use a nano VNA, although it really isn't recommended to do so, but if you had to do so in a pinch, you certainly could. The important things to remember are... Your RF in and RF out or RF in and out, it really doesn't matter which side of the filter you connect that to. The important thing is, is that the port you're not working with, you want to go ahead and isolate with a dummy load. On the opposite side of the duplexer, you can see that we have a tuning rod for each one of our cavities here. It's more like a tuning screw, actually, and you can see that it's slotted. Now, in certain varieties of these duplexers, you'll see that sometimes they have a lock nut and you need to loosen the lock nut up before you start making adjustments to this. Now we're going to demonstrate tuning this duplexer. This duplexer is already tuned to the 462725 repeater pair, and we're going to demonstrate on the transmitter side of the duplexer where it needs to be tuned to notch the receiver frequency of 467725. So we'll be working with these three cavities here. So now we're going to detune our duplexer so we can see the effect that tuning has on our display. Now let's enter the frequency data into our instrument. We know we're going to be in the 460 to 470 megahertz range so we'll go ahead and do that and that gives us 10 megahertz to work in and that's good because it's going to allow us to see the desired and notch frequencies at the same time. Now let's set our markers. Now let's set up our tracking generator. And we've got our cables connected together. So we're going to go ahead and normalize. And then we'll go back to our markers. Now we've connected our duplexer and we've terminated the port we're not working with with the 50 ohm load and you can see our results here and what we need to do is we need to drive this notch to number two or marker two and you can see that one's really bringing it in okay so now we've got number two at neg 36 so we need to drive our notch down further
And what we're going to do is, is we're just going to work this back and forth until we drive our notch down. Now you'll note that we have all this noise right here and we can address that while still having it refresh quickly enough. And that's just to go into bandwidth and change it from 300 kilohertz to 10. And you can see right now where we're at, go back to our marker and you can see that we're a negative 60 so we're gonna work a little bit harder on this now and drive our notch even further down so about as much as I can get out of this duplexer is minus seven one point nine seven so we're like 8 DB down from my desired goal so let's go ahead and change to marker one and our insertion loss is just over 1 dB. Now we're hooked up to the receiver side of our duplexer and you can see our insertion loss is 0.77 dB and our notch is minus 71.49. So we're pretty much done with this duplexer as far as tuning it goes. Well, I wanted to see if I could improve my notch and I did. Now I'm at neg 73 and I did that by zooming in so now we're just sweeping from 465 to 470 and you can see that my marker is right where I want it to be and the depth of the notch is running between negative 70 and negative 76 dB this is our final insertion loss on the transmit side which is 0.62 dB and after tweaking our input side, we've got it down to minus 75.97, which is good. And our insertion loss on our input side. As a final sanity check, we will do an SWR sweep of the input and output side with the antenna connector terminated in a 50 ohm load. Now you can also use this technique to perform a basic check of a repeater that has no range to ensure that their duplexer is not reverse connected. Terminate the antenna connection of the duplexer with a 50 ohm load and using an antenna and cable analyzer, sweep the input and output ports of the duplexer to see if the measurements jive with their connections. If the measurements are bad across the band, make sure that they even have the correct band duplexer paired to the repeater by changing bands in your instrument and retesting. It wouldn't be the first or last time something like that happens. I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comms. Till next time.